The world has been plunged into a nuclear fallout. Instead of braving the radiation and undead, you decide to head underground for a new life. If only it was that simple, though. Anyways, enter Project Zomboid, one of the most customizable zombie games to date, and today, instead of braving the normal Kentucky climate, we will instead take things underground in a sprawling metro, filled to the brim with cordyceps zombies from The Last of Us. Resources will be scarce, crafting will be essential, and death will be around every corner, and my big goal today is to simply survive as long as I can, or die trying. So, how far can we survive in such limited circumstance? Only time can tell. Wish me luck. Well, I guess we're about to learn if being down here is better than being up there very soon. Anyways, everyone, welcome back to Project Zomboid. And today, if you couldn't tell, we are going to be trapped underground with a whole bunch of cordyceps zombies. What I'm trying to say is that it's going to be a real fun time. And right now, I am in danger. So before I describe anything else, I'm going to slink my way on inside of this little cubby, and I will describe our character and predicament. First of all, our hero of the story is Steve Thompson, a metal worker who was most importantly athletic, strong, handy, a fast learner, a scrap warrior, and has cat eyes. But the cherry on top is that we are also susceptible, which means the zombie virus is airborne, and if I don't have a mask and I get caught in close proximity with zombies, I will die. On top of that, we have also started with a few items that won't help out my initial survival, but will be indispensable in the future. And that is... A selection of recipe magazines so I can craft up basic weapons, basic guns, and armor. Because I found out by doing a whole bunch of test runs with this mod pack, finding skill magazines and can openers is nigh impossible. So in order to make me like actually play the game and experience the mod pack, I have decided to spawn them in. There is nothing else to help my survival though, other than the can opener because over all of my testing I haven't found a single one. Yeah, aside from that though, we are completely defenseless and bare. No weapons, no tools, no armor, nor guns to our name. Which is a very big problem because we are playing with the Last of Us Infected mod, which changes up the infected quite a bit. So before I head out fully, let me show you how bad it can get. Oh, hello there. Alright. No, 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 no! I'm dead. Apples ah! very quickly. Oh, no, 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 no! Yeah, no, it's not fun at all. Even with weapons, the clickers are one of the most dangerous zombies out there, and if I want to survive, I need to take things extremely slowly. So, to start things off, let's go look around the area to see if I can find any basic supplies to help me survive. So far, we have three whole plastic bags. I'll take one of those. I guess it's better than nothing. I would have really liked a real weapon, but what are you gonna do? Before I head downstairs, though, let me go check out the other cubby as well, because as soon as I go down there, all bets are off, and the chances I die are pretty dang high. We got ourselves an empty bottle, a garbage bag, and finally, over here, we have bleach, a dish towel. I will keep the bleach in its normal form, because I can use those to fix up masks. Uh, a saw, a radio, and finally, we got ourselves paper clips and pens. You know what? That's not the worst thing, actually, because as terrible as those pens are, they might actually save my life. Because, if a clicker does come up on me, I will be able to stab it very briefly and run by it without getting dragged down and ripped to shreds. But yeah, that's all we have. A single pen and a grocery bag. Now thankfully, after doing all of my test runs with this mod pack, I have figured out a pretty good strategy on when you start off. And it's to abuse these bad boys right here. These are the equivalent of fence lines in the game. So if I lead zombies back here, we should be A-OK, -okay. though I will also say you can't kill clickers with your feet. It's nigh impossible, so we can't use that to our advantage. Anyways, let's go head on downstairs very slowly. Already, there's a runner right down there. They're not too much of an issue, though. Oh, nope, there's another runner. Okay, 
Let's hop over really quick and stomp him out. Nice. What do you got on you, buddy? A classic wristwatch. We'll take that to tell the time. And that's gonna be my strategy, really. Just going back and forth between these uh, fence posts and hopefully not catching any strays. This is gonna be extremely stressful, by the way, because before I can actually rest up and make a base, we need to clear out the entirety of this of this place. Oh, right there. Nice try. All we gotta do is take our damn time. Any weapons on you two? No, there is a key though. I will yoink that right now so I can go ahead and unlock this door very quickly. Run away right now. Oh man, that was a little bit risky. There's also a clicker coming up here and we will have to kill it with our pen. And now I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm gonna stab him first, please. Okay, nice. And as you see, no matter how much I stomp this little thing's head in, it doesn't die. So the only way we can kill a clicker is with a good old lobotomy to the head. That's gonna be one pen down though, but that's one less zombie to worry about. Okay, we have our strategy, we have our pen, we're a little bit thirsty, but we'll have to wait. <laughs> Let's see if I can slip my way on into some back storage area now, because that is the second goal, right? We need a good, reliable, long-range weapon. And I think our best chance is gonna be those shelves right over there. So let's move our way right on down to it. Bada bingo, we're safe. And what do we got? We have ourselves a singular rake. You know what? That's better than a pen. Give me that right now. On top of the rake, we have a book, pants, a hoodie, long socks, pliers, another rake. Am I about to use these as weapons? Yes, yes I am. <laughs> uh, we got a saw. We also got a dust mask, some boxes of nails, a saw. Okay, a nail gun. Well, hello there. Uh, a wrench. That's actually a reliable weapon. I wonder if I should take that. I mean, it could help me out, but it could also kill me. Eh, we got about 18 kilos of weight. Carrying around a 2 kilogram nail gun might save my life. I also do have the advanced trajectory mod, so hopefully that'll help me out as well. Let's load it up, and maybe it'll come into handy. Okay, what's up next? We have no zombies down here, and we got ourselves a large bolt, metal sheets, and a pipe wrench. That's even better than the normal wrench. Let's swap those out. There is a shovel, but that thing is about to break at a moment's notice, so I won't take that. Oh, and speaking about clickers, there's one right in here. We need to play this extremely carefully. I'm gonna open the door and slam it right in the head. Whew, nice, nice, nice. It's down, let's finish it off. Oh! It's a good thing those two didn't coordinate an attack. And it looks like we found ourselves in some kind of overseer's office, including a bed, a small chest, a working computer, a bookshelf, and a small little armory. Well, hello there. Okay, more importantly, it looks extremely bad outside. Golly gee, we are gonna have a bad time. That's fine. Let's go look around the area very briefly, and we might find ourselves something cool. We got books in here. And over here, we got ourselves a whole bunch of good stuff, like gas mask filters, 9mm rounds, a whole bunch of ammo, shotgun shells, and that is actually gonna be it. Oh, that is one last thing I will say. I did set guns to extremely rare in order to make myself craft up my own weapons and tools, right? So we are gonna be making a whole bunch of homemade weapons. For now, we are gonna be using melee. Also, the subway system looks so damn bad right now. I am counting at least 10. And I think the way we deal with those is using our pipe wrench, just fence cheesing the hell out of them. But before we do that, we have one more spot to check out. This small little storeroom here, which seems to house some food. And by food, I mean wires. <laughs> okay, not as helpful. Metal sheets, nails, oh, there's the food, baby. Yeah, yeah. We got ourselves beef to shanka, a whole bunch of canned carrots, chilies, peas, pineapple nulls. Now you might be saying, wow, that's quite a bit of food. It really isn't. In the testing that I've done, 
the way this entire thing works is I get enough resources and weapons to get a small stockpile of weapons and food, and that's going to have to last me until I reach another subway station, which can take days. So it's really not much at all. Matter of fact, I'm kind of sad I didn't get any more. Anyways, inside of the ice coolers, we got ourselves two tubs of ice cream. Another two. Four. Okay, we got, our, we got ourselves around nine tubs of ice cream as well. I'm going to help myself to one full tub. And after we're done eating, we are going to begin the big ol' coal. Hopefully it won't be that bad, but now that we do have a weapon, things are going to get a little bit easier for me. Is that zombie right outside my damn door? Oh, it is. Nice try, buddy. <laughs> Maybe in another life. Come on now. I know you're behind there. Yep, there you are, buddy. Yeah. Okay, there's going to be some more. I'm going to run across very quickly. I'm going to shout once, and we're going to lead them up to do some cheese. By the way, that small little interaction right there is why this is going to be a very nerve-wracking series, right? Because all it takes is one wrong move, and those things will rip me to shreds. Which means I won't be getting any comforts at all playing through this. We're going to be on edge all the time. Anyways, we're going to continue shouting, hopefully bringing them up one by one. I think that's going to be the majority of them. That can hear my screams, of course, as I do think a couple of clickers have gotten caught up on doorways, so I need to take care of them very soon. We are getting very thirsty, so we are on a bit of a time crunch, but I will be grabbing that nice leather jacket for extra protection and this riding helmet as well, including the gloves. And now that we have all this stuff, I think I'm going to head down very slowly and we'll see if we can kill all of them. God, I hate the sounds they make so much. It's so nerve wracking. Okay, there's one right there, right at the bathroom. Is it just you, buddy? I think it is. Okay, I'm going to slam you with this rake now. There it is. Nice. I don't hear anything else downstairs. I'm going to slip my way on inside now and we can go grab some water. Okay, clear. Woo. Oh man, I gotta say, if you really want a terrifying, nerve-wracking experience, you will find it right here. Okay, we have cleared out the upper areas though, which means it's just the downstairs. We're gonna take it slow as always. How bad could it be, right? <laughs> oh, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad. Oh my lord, that was terrifying. <laughs> Combining sprinters with this entire thing is definitely not something I'd recommend. That's two more down, though, and let's repeat that a few more times. Okay, actually, things are pretty clear right now. It's a little bit eerie. Now, I don't trust the dividers for my entire life. I feel like there's going to be quite a few more zombies down here, as I do feel like there's going to be quite a few more zombies sitting within the shadows here. So I'm going to be ready to run at a moment's notice, and we are going to peek right on down. There's going to be two clickers down there, a small group of zombies, and then up north we have one runner. This isn't bad at all. I can kill the clickers with my rakes. But I do spy with my little eye a runner with a duffel bag, so I think I'm going to clear out this southern area as much as possible. And then once we clear it out and grab the duffel, I'm going to be using the trash cans in the little, like, waiting area to block off this entrance so there's one less worry to worry about. It won't be the best barricade, but I really do enjoy the whole aesthetic of, like, blocking off certain pathways to prevent zombies from, like, you know, reaching it and killing you. Anyways, we gotta kill a few more zombies, then we got ourselves a basic bag. And maybe some other supplies. By the way, it's actually extremely cool because it's so damn dark within these subway tunnels, we are able to sneak a whole lot better, right? As if you check my Moodle, you can see that we are completely enveloped by darkness, which means that if I can see inside here, we can kill zombies a lot more stealthily. Of course, I would still really like a flashlight, but it's very cool that we can pick off zombies like that without too much of a hassle. Anyways, we gotta kill this clicker, and then we gotta kill two more runners. 
Okay, we pulled it off, everyone. That's three less zombies, so I'm gonna leave the rest there. I will also say we got a few good items from that entire excursion. For one, a cool little letter opener. Secondly, we got ourselves a bulletproof vest, a tea bag, but most importantly, out of all of it, Actually, I'll wear the police jacket as well, but most importantly, on this zombie right here, we got ourselves a pair of scissors, which means I'll be able to process down leather to use in the future, which is huge, man. Because if you didn't know, a lot of the recipes in this game call for what you call it. They call for leather strips, and there's no other way of getting leather strips aside from cutting them from leather coats. So getting that pretty early might open up some doors for me to craft up some spears. Of course, I still need a few more things like a welding mask, uh, a propane torch, and other stuff like that. Also, when the hell did you two get in here? For now, I really want to barricade the southern area, so let's go do that very quickly with a small little bop montage. Bop, 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 bop. Anyways, it is 10 p.m., we are getting drowsy, and our combat ability is going to be at a minimum. I will also say, we have been picking up quite a few bottles from the trash cans, and I will be filling up all of them with what you might call it, with water, right? Because water is going to be a pretty big problem. There are no toilets inside our bathroom, and as soon as the water does go out, we are going to be strapped. So yeah, getting as much as possible will be very nice. We also did pick up a letter opener off that dead zombie, and we do have ourselves a black duffel bag with some chips in it, including some screws. Oh right, that's not bad. I'll take the chips, leave the bag, and then we're gonna head upstairs and sleep for the night. After a full day's worth of fighting and a few very stressful moments, we have finally awoke on day two. We are a little bit agitated because we are a smoker and we don't have anything like that right now. We also went ahead and read a few magazines in our spare time, and I will probably be reading the rest of these later. Also, I think I'm going to turn this place into a base, right? It has a bedroom, it has food storage, it has an armory, it has everything I could ever want. And we are also going to be at this train station for quite the long while, right? It's a very long walk between the different areas, and the areas I reach might not even be that good. So having a nice little base camp would make my life a little bit more comforting. So let's go drop off all of our DIY stuff, and then we can continue looting. Hopefully clearing out the rest of the northern area and potentially barricading it. How's it look here? There's two clickers. We can deal with them with a rake. Or better yet, I might lead them back really quick and try my best to use this nail gun, right? It is a ranged weapon, and we have a whole bunch of nails. Yeah, you know what? Let's try it out. We just gotta wait a bit. Aim, shoot. Just like that. It jammed. I'm just gonna lead them upstairs and kill them with the fence line. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a lot easier that way. <laughs> As a good old pipe wrench will do wonders to a zombie population. Okay, let's go head back down. And if there's no more zombies down the tunnel, I might check out the next little interior area. I have been holding off on looting it right now because there is a pretty good chance there's a, you know, there is a clicker hiding behind some cheeky doorway, and I really don't want that to be the way I go out, you know? Okay, there are another one, two, three zombies down here. One clicker, two runners. Should be easy. <laughs> I mean, we've killed all of the ones in the main tunnel system. The ones up north are a little bit further up ahead. Also, is that a spiffo? What the hell? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Anyways, I could care less about spiffo right now. What I care more about is actually securing this damn place. There are two zombies down there, two runners. They're gonna smash it down. We're gonna let them, and then we're gonna clear out the interiors. Yep, right there. Okay, run. <laughs> Okay, you know what? I think after the dynamic duo we just took care of with our fence line, we can finally, like, relax a little bit. Also, I do find it very funny how integral fences are to, like, every run I do with sprinters, man. If I didn't have that little thing at the start, my life would be a lot worse off. 
Anyways, I think I'm gonna loot this small little off branch first, then we'll check out the bigger little area in there. I don't see any zombies way down except for the spiffo, so we should be pretty damn safe. And of course, as soon as I say it's safe, there's a clicker waiting for me. Okay, I hear the other one in there. Come on. Come on out. I did not mean to shout there. I'm gonna run out to make sure I didn't attract any more. Okay, we're good. Awesome sauce. Holy hell, that was a little bit stressful. I think the zombies have spawned outside our zone, though, so they are completely harmless to me. We also got ourselves potato seeds, carrot seeds, a long metal pipe, including a welder mask. That is genuinely huge. Uh, especially the metal pipe, because that gives me a ranged weapon, or I guess a ranged melee weapon that isn't absolute beans to swing like a rake. On top of that, we have... Some metal bars, metal sheets, springs, barbed wire, a pretty massive round point shovel, pliers, a file, a lug wrench for a weapon, some garden shears, rope, which I can use to turn into twine, nails, safety goggles, and finally, inside of this little bit of uh, lockers here, we got a bucket, huge, more seeds, a trowel, even more buckets. A magazine, books, which are very good to have, actually. A Rifleman magazine, and finally, one last book. You know what? I think that's pretty good for me, at least for today. I will be looting the uh, next building next episode. I really don't want to, you know, do it all at once here. I think we're doing all right. I'm gonna head back to my silly little house. I'm gonna fill up these buckets with water, and we will work from there. Also, I want to know what's going on with this little roadblock here. Yeah, you can't bypass it, but I do hear zombies on the other side. So maybe if I get a sledgehammer, I'll be able to smash that down. Okay, anyways, I gotta go head back and fill up some water. And you know what? For the rest of the day, I might go and read, right? Okay, that's gonna be all of our magazines, and now that we have read them, they are basically fuel for fires. I mean, yeah, we've learned everything we could. And now that we have read it, we can actually craft up some cool stuff, like weapons. A whole bunch of weapons, right? If we get enough supplies and enough metalworking equipment and experience, we can make pipe bombs, salvaged assault rifles at level 8 metalworking, that'll probably never happen. But we can craft up stuff like scrap pistols, scrap SMGs, slam fire shotguns, dumbbell maces, you know, very makeshift weapons that should hopefully run run right through the undead populace. The only things that I need right now, I would say, is definitely a cordless drill. I also need planks. And lastly, but most importantly, I do need a propane torch. So maybe we'll get it inside the, you know, surrounding area next episode. If not, I'm sure we can, you know, we can fajangle something together or find some security hatch that has it, right? And you know what? Speaking about that, I said I was going to end the episode. I'm going to go check a little bit more forward. After I grab some ice cream, of course. I'm just dead curious about the other areas. Holy hell, I hate this. I really should have saved this for another episode. I'm going to shout. I'm not even going to risk it. And we're going to see how, ma how many zombies pour out of that hallway, right? That door is broken down. So I do know they are here and ready to kill me. Boom. There's one down. How many more are there? I have no idea if that's coming up behind me or if it's ahead of me. I'm going to go head out very quickly, though. I don't want to risk it. Who goes there now? The little, the little guy was coming up behind me. That's terrifying. Actually terrifying, and it really shows you I can't rest in this damn mod pack. Okay, there's another one right here. Disposed of. Okay, thanks for the pop. <laughs> yeah, I definitely need to keep an eye out for uh, clickers whenever I do shout. We did level up sprinting, though, which is extremely nice. And finally, we can, you know, just check out this area a little bit more. I do hear... At the very least, one clicker. 
inside here. There are none, though. That's also another level of Nimble. And it's actually clear inside here, so I think they spawned on the outside once again. Okay, what do we got? If I just find one... Okay, propane torch is right there. We're set? Okay, cool. I'm gonna save the looting and, like, you know, uh, crafting bit for next episode. I'm done here today, man. I'm gonna go head upstairs. We are drowsy, so I have earned myself a nice rest. Maybe next episode I can, you know, focus on crafting up some basic weaponry. And maybe, if I'm good enough, I can barricade the rest of the tunnel off. Yeah. For now, that's gonna be the end of Steve Thompson's story. Maybe we'll survive longer than a month, or maybe we will get cut down like a dog. In this type of run, I have no idea. Anyways, if you guys have liked this episode, be sure to like, favorite, share, and subscribe for more. I will see all of you next time. Peace the hell out, everyone.